Get rid of pests with diametaceous earth powder. Diametaceous earth is made from the fossilized remains of tiny aquatic organisms called diatoms. Their skeletons are made of a natural substance called silica. Over a long period of time, diatoms accumulated in the sediments of rivers, streams, lakes, and oceans. Today, silica deposits are mined from these areas. Use food-grade diametaceous earth as an organic way to kill aphids and other insects like ants, spider mites, snails and slugs, fleas, cockroaches. Diametaceous earth causes insects to dry out and die by absorbing the oils and fats from the insects' exoskeletons. Cuticle. Use Epsom salt to correct magnesium deficiency. The chemical makeup of Epsom salt is hydrated magnesium sulfate. The magnesium in your Epsom salt can help your plants absorb more of the nutrients. Magnesium also helps plants use nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. But excessive amounts will not increase normal uptake. It's a good idea to test your soil for the magnesium level. It is soluble in water and numerous plants in the garden can quickly take up the magnesium and benefit from the nutrients. The science behind Epsom salts use is only applicable to intensive crop production in situations where magnesium is known to be deficient in the soil or the plants. There are two primary causes of magnesium deficiency in plants, an actual lock of soil magnesium or an imposed deficiency caused by mineral imbalances in the soil or plant. Magnesium deficiencies most commonly occur in soils described as light, sandy or acidic, though occasionally clay soils on the intensive production can show magnesium deficiency as well. Magnesium is a physical part of the chlorophyll molecule. A lack of magnesium will cause a corresponding reduction in chlorophyll production leading to leaf chlorosis often used as an indicator of magnesium deficiency. Epsom salts added to adequately fertilized plants will not increase chlorophyll production for that plant. So in terms of application for the rose garden, sprinkle one third cup granules or diluted solution around the base of your rose plant in the spring with new emerging growth. Apply one third cup granules or diluted solutions in the fall. In your garden breads, spread one cup of Epsom salt for every 100 square feet or dilute one tablespoon of Epsom salt with one gallon of warm water. Another option is to add one tablespoon directly to the roots and soak well. My soil test results from the University of Georgia extension showed deficiencies in potassium, phosphorus, and magnesium in the hoop house. Today I will be irrigating with some dissolved Epsom salt. So I, what I did, I dissolved one cup of the Epsom salt with warm water. I mixed the solution in a 33 gallon container filled with the water. I added, um, now some op uh, option outside of the Epsom salt is you could add some lime, dolomite lime, which also has magnesium and calcium in it. The recommendation is to add the dolomite limestone um, that will satisfy that should add before planting and that should also satisfy the lime recommendation and provide the needed magnesium. The soil had a pH of 5.4 and so that indicate acidic. The limestone will assist in raising the pH.
Another recommendation as a result of the salt test is to apply one tablespoon of borax per 100 feet of row to crops such as broccoli and root crops such as turnips and beets. There are many ways to use the borax as a fertilizer. The easiest way is to till it into the soil before planting. One of the specifications provided is to mix the borax thoroughly with approximately one quart of soil in a container and then use the mixture along the row. The boron in boric acid is a nutrient needed in minimal quantities by plants. Another option is to mix one tablespoon of borax with one gallon of water and sprinkle one ounce of solution around each plant's root. According to ProMix, boron is used with calcium in cell wall synthesis and is essential for cell divisions. Boron requirements are much higher for reproductive growth, helping with pollination and fruit and seed development. Other functions include translocation of sugars and carbohydrates, nitrogen metabolism, formation of specific proteins, regulation of hormone levels, and potassium transportation uh, to stomata. Since boron helps transport sugars, its deficiency causes a reduction of exudates and sugars from plant roots, reducing the attraction and colonization of mycorrhizae fungi. Nothing should go to waste, and fallen leaves are no exception. It can be used as a mulch to keep down weeds and reduce moisture evaporation from the soil. Additionally, leaf mold can be used as a soil conditioner to add fertility to your growing areas and as a potting mix alternative to peat moss. Create a large enough structure to accommodate all the fallen leaves you would like to collect with adequate ventilation. Deciduous trees leaves are best. Do not use evergreens and walnut leaves. I use a uh, three feet high chicken wire. Now after one year, the leaves will have broken down and can be used as a garden mulch. In two to three years, your leaves will have completely broken down into a soil conditioner. That will be ideal for potting soil and trace elements in soil amendments in the garden. It holds moisture and air. Leaf mold also stimulates biological activities in the soil, creating a micro, microbial activity and reducing pest presence. You could shred the leaves into smaller pieces, especially for thicker leaves, to aid faster breakdown. You could also speed up the decay by covering the leaves or pile the leaves in the shade where evaporation is reduced. Adding nitrogen-rich materials such as vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, and grass clippings Allow, also allow for faster breakdown. Also, in addition to what should be avoided, the other leaves that should be avoided are eucalyptus leaves. A top cover helps to provide cost-effective protection for your greenhouse structures from rain, snow, debris, and other elements. Get a top large enough to cover the entire structure. On rainy days, pull over the top of the greenhouse. 
Since this top is not translucent, on dry sunny days, I slide it down towards the greenhouse's northern side. The cover also reduces heat loss on cold nights by providing an additional barrier and covering any leaks or small gaps.